I, I got to tell you a story about, uh, my last trip to Phoenix. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was sitting Raphael Morphy and I were going to dinner in the, in the hotel <laughs> and, uh, there was a bar area leading into the restaurant area in the back of the house. And, uh, so I saw Laurinaitis, John Laurinaitis there. He was, I think he was there with Dean Malenko, their buddies. <laughs> and so I just walked on by and went to my back in the restaurant and went to my table, Raphael stick behind and, and, uh, so, so wait, hang on, let me set the scene here. You're in Phoenix for an AEW event where they're going to have a live dynamite and then taper and page after correct. And this is the night before the show or after the show night before on Tuesday. Okay. So night before the show on a Tuesday night, you're hanging out in the AEW hotel and of all people, you see Johnny Ace there. Yeah. Yeah. It surprised okay. me. I didn't, you know, I, I had heard some, but I think, I think maybe Dean told me that, uh, he was going to go there. He was going to get picked up at the airport by Lauren Itis when he arrived in, uh, Phoenix, but I'd forgotten about it. it right. Looked like it's a big deal to me one way or the other. And so I walk on down to the restaurant and, uh, waiting on Raphael to get down there. And I, uh, so we could be seated and, uh, I look up and here comes, uh, Raphael and Johnny Laurinaitis. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, I, I wasn't ready for this conference. Not, it wasn't a confrontation at all. We had a nice, we had a nice con conversation. And, uh, I told him, I said, you know, we, I'm, I'm too old and I'm, I'm trying to overcome these issues with my skin cancer and all the subsequent treatment. I got more important things to do. To, to worry about than, than having a grudge right? and living a grudge. So we kind of cleared the air and I uh, had a nice conversation and, uh, I thought it took a lot of balls for him to come approach me, to be honest with you, because he had read everything I'd written about, you know, him being a chicken shit and, and, uh, and I told him I was kind of, I, I said, I apologize for some of the things I said, I get emotional and, <clears throat> and there you go. Yeah. So, so anyway, we had a nice little, you know, 10, 15 minute chat. And, uh, of course, John lives in Phoenix. And, uh, so I'm kind of glad that we got that out of the way because it's just better to live your life without that, that additional stress and, uh, an angst. It's just a negative thing. And I didn't want to mire myself into negativity. This that doesn't make any sense. I'm too goddamn old. Uh, you know, I, I'm more concerned about my health and my job and travel and all the things that go along with it. My wound doctor, God. So, uh, anyhow, that's kind of what that was. That was a surprise. It was a surprising meeting and, and he was very sincere and he was very upfront, very honest. And so I, uh, I thought I'd share that with our, our, uh, folks here on the podcast. I haven't talked about it at all. It was social media. So this is a breaking news. Right. So, uh, anyway, it was good. I was, it was a surprisingly good and I'm glad he, he stepped up and he, and he, we had a nice clean talk conversation and cleared the air, so to speak. You know, I don't know that we'll be on each other's Christmas card list, but nonetheless, uh, I kind of admired his, uh, his, uh, what he said to me and what he and him making the first move. Cause like I said, I forgot he was even coming and I didn't see him standing at the bar with Dean and all, all everybody else that was there. And, you know, I'm sure he's, he didn't sit, tell me this, you know, Lauren Addis, but he, you know, he's, uh, I'm sure he may be looking for work. Hell, I don't know. I didn't ask him. So, uh, but I, his wife's been sick and she's surviving. Well, it seems like, and I like her a lot and a uh, really nice lady. So, uh, you know, we'll, moving forward on it. it's kind of cool but it was a it was a nice thing you know folks none of us can live in in uh, denial we can't live in angst and anger and being pissed off and hurt feelings and all that shit let's be, a, be an adult and uh i get past that and so that's kind of what we did and so i like to think we're past it and i'm not i i have no issues with him at this point in time I, i'm glad that he he did what he did i admire what he did so, uh, but it was a nice conversation. He was prepared for it. I can tell you that he, he knew what he wanted to say. And, 
He just got caught, caught in a crossfire there. It seems to me like made some bad decisions. Apparently. I don't know. I didn't, we didn't delve into his situation to it very deeply, but I was glad that we got, at least got a chance to chat. I was, you know, Conrad, I'm 71 years old. I don't know. You know, I, I'm hopeful I'm going to be around a long time as I knock on wood, but you never know. Right. You know, we got no guarantees here. Tomorrow's right. are not guaranteed. Tomorrow's are not guaranteed. So, uh, it was a interesting conversation. Glad it happened. And I, I wish him well. You know, usually when somebody comes to, uh, a wrestling show like that for a company, they don't work for it's one of two things. They either just want to visit old friends or they're looking for a gig. Yeah. And I'm curious if you were a betting man, do you think Johnny Ace was there just to hang with friends or is he trying to join oh, the I, AEW team? I, well, you know, I don't know. I I'm guessing that he was his, his original intent was to visit his friends especially some of those guys he worked with in WCW and WWE, like Dean Malenko and others. So I, I kind of think that was his primary motivation for coming down to the hotel and having a, having a pop and seeing his friends. Uh, I don't, he didn't mention to me about working for AEW, but I think it'd be, it would, it shouldn't be a shocker if he wanted to, wanted a job, you know, the, one of the hardest jobs in wrestling is the talent relations job. Especially now, uh, it's, it's doubly challenging. Talents are always looking for more information. They're looking for honesty. Uh, they're looking to be up front with them. And, uh, so he may, he may be interested in a, in a talent relations role. I don't know, but he did tell me that. So, but if a guy's in as a wrestling person and he's, uh, in, he's at a, an event, like you just described, Connie. Uh, it, he could, there could be some smoke, some fire where the smoke is, but I don't know that he didn't, he didn't tell me that he was here looking for work and if anything you can do to help me, please do blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I get that all the time. So, uh, you know, I hope it, every, I hope he lands on his feet and does whatever he wants to do, but I'm not mad at him anymore. And I feel better about not being mad at him anymore. Good for you. I, yeah. I don't want to be mad at anybody. I, I don't, I'm not, you know, we're here in the, we're in the late innings here. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm just not interested in, in all the drama, uh, and all that stuff. So interesting, interesting, uh, meetup, uh, to say the least. And you're getting all that information first right here on, uh, Berlin JR today.